Hello, folks. Welcome back to Chris White Reports here on the Adobe Africa Channel. This is Colonel Retired Chris White, U.S. Army, uh, reporting from central Pennsylvania on the bad weather's taking place in the Western Cape down there in South Africa. Pretty crazy what's actually happening right now. Horrible weather in the Western Cape. Uh, cold fronts pouring in. Lots of flooding taking place. And as usual, there is assistance needed by the public. In this case, it's once again the not-for-profit organization, Gift of the Givers, that's out there helping out. My guest today to talk about the situation, what Gift of the Givers has been able to do so far, and the situation in Western Cape is Ali Sable. Ali, um, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, listen, um, there's not been a lot of reporting in the press about what Gift of the Givers is doing. I don't know if that's because Gift of the Givers is always shy about seeking attention, which is very humble. I know that your founder is pretty humble, but uh, the press is only, I've only seen one story about the contribution to Gift of the Givers, and it was actually a confusing story. So we want to get the, the story actually from you. Where is the place that you've been focused the most uh, this week over the flooding? Is, is it West Coast? Is it in the, the Winelands? Is it in the Cape Flats? Where is the most need? You know, Chris, this time Thank of the know. year, the Western, Cape, the Western Cape is nearly prone to heavy rains and floods. But normally, it's normally like the hot spot in formal settlements, like your Kailicha, your Google to your Mitchell Spain. But in the morning, the morning of 14th of June, when the heavy rains and storms came down, funny enough, it was not these informal settlements that were calling us. It was from towns all around the Western Cape metropole. The, Western, the, the, the heavy storms, has hit the hit, uh, metropole very hard. And as you correctly said, it was the areas of your Cedarburg, West Coast. It was the Cape Winelands, as far as Rosenville and uh, Worcester and the Dwarans. It was areas along the M2, Sierras and Grabo. And then of course, we all know the situation of Citrusdale that is still completely cut off. The road has washed away completely. So this far, uh, Chris, I just did the data um, based with my teams. We have assisted so far 27 areas in this last few days, rolling out humanitarian aid all over, and our, our uh, distribution and our assistance will continue for the next few days as well. Ali, that, that begs the question here about the sort of humanitarian assistance. Uh, my experience with Gift of the Givers is that you provide immediate resources like clean water, blankets, shelter if necessary. Uh, I imagine food as well. Is, is that part of what you're doing for residents in these areas? That's correct. What we our, our humanitarian package consists of when we go into the area first, because the communities are really hungry and cold, we provide a hot, nutritious meal. We roll out blankets, we roll out mattresses, we roll out baby care items that your baby uh, nappies and your baby cereal, bottle water, personal hygiene items, and then um, of course non-perishable food items. So when we leave, at least they'll have food to carry on for the next few days. And for those that are situated in the shelters, we provide the shelters with bulk food to carry on cooking for the next two the next two weeks. Well, it sounds very comprehensive. I imagine that a lot of people, when they rush to help on their own, that aren't organized like Gift of the Givers are, that they probably think, of course, water, maybe some food, maybe some blankets, but they forget about those personal hygiene items, particularly for women. That's an important consideration. Uh, the items for babies that are often forgotten about, the things that don't come to mind. You you seem to have, and Gift of Givers has been at this for a long time, you seem to have a comprehensive approach and a plan in place for when disaster strikes. Is that a fair statement? That's correct. What we normally do, we'll have um, beforehand, in, in, when the, we can see the weather patterns changing, uh, we'll either get a call from the Western Cape or, the, or any disaster relief agency in the country informing us that there is um, this disaster coming to a certain province. And in this case, it was the Western Cape. We will then work on a plan of action as to see how we can assist um, the, the vulnerable. But um, but if this one caught everyone off guard as it affected areas that they didn't uh, suspect to affect and, and how the magnitude of the devastation is huge. We find the uh, um, dam walls bursting, we find the river banks bursting, and we find uh, infrastructure, key infrastructure, completely destroyed. And... Speaking about Citrusdal, um, Chris, you know, the, the, the town is dependable on 11 balls. 10 of those balls got completely washed away on the 14th of June. The town is surviving on one ball. So imagine your town being cut off, surviving on one ball. If more heavy rain come and wash that ball away, there will be another humanitarian crisis in the town because there will be no clean drinking water. 
Today, they've run out of fuel. Unfortunately, no fuel tanker can go into the area because the roads are still not accessible and it will take months for that road to be fixed. Well, that's a pretty frightening situation to say the very least there, Ali. So I want to come back to the areas that are flooded and and how it's different this time than it normally is. But before we get to it, let's talk about this citrus doll situation. Has the weather cleared enough that helos can get in there? Has anyone come in from Cape Town or, or from Stellenbosch with any sort of relief with helicopters? Is, is that in the role? I realize that's probably not a resource that Gifted the Givers has, but is anybody, the Western Cape government or private organizations doing something to bring food and clean water into these people who seem to be in a desperate situation? Uh, Chris, on Saturday morning, on Friday, last week Friday, we had a meeting with disastrous management teams and we realized the extent of the humanitarian crisis in Sipritao. We then decided on Saturday that passed, which was the 17th of June, we will have three helicopters, one sponsored by the South African National Defense Force and the other two by the Western Cape disaster risk management teams. All was going to plan and 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, we had to abort the plan of helicopters. All three helicopters could not fly because of the uh, severe winds and the rainfall. We then went for the second option, which will be boats on the only van Rafir going across to Citrusdal. That had to be aborted as well as the, rain, as the river stream was too heavy. Then we had met with locals and one farmer informed us he knows of a farmer who has a private concrete breach bolt on his farm it's cutting through into Sitrasdal. We got a water engineer in, and by 2 p.m. Saturday afternoon, he gave us a thumbs up. He said, the water tide is low. This bridge can hold your trucks. And he said, you guys move. You have to move immediately. You can just imagine the sheer joy and excitement when 20 tons of gift of the givers trucks went through into Sitrasdal. We could only be there for an hour and a half, Chris, because you remember we have to come back over the bridge, and the water level was rising. We offloaded to the humanitarian aid in forms of blankets, mattresses, food, etc. And then we left the town for enough supplies for a week and a half, two weeks. Uh, but the, uh, the, 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 of course, whatever aid you brought is not enough because what, the water is becoming scarce now. The items on the, even those people that can't afford to buy food, can't afford to get stuff because the shops has rent out of supplies because no, no items can come in. So we will be visiting Citrusdale again, if not via the same route, via helicopters. That's what we've been doing on Sunday. We were in Wuppertal. That area was cut off eight days without any humanitarian aid. We managed to use the three helicopters that we were supposed to use for Citrusdale, loaded up with food items and do numerous trips into that town and towns around it as well. That's a pretty scary situation there in Citrusdale. I mean, uh, back in the day, South African uh, National Defense Force uh, had the capability to do airdrop, that sort of thing. They could do pallet loads and drop those in the area. Pretty frightening. Uh, our thoughts and prayers for the res residents of Citrus Dahl. I don't know if anyone would get up, but we're not talking about a couple dozen families. I mean, Citrus Dahl is a town of at least 7,000 occupants. That's that's quite a massive undertaking. As you said, 20 tons of relief supplies that got in on that one time you got in. That should hold them for a number of days. But uh, the water, of course, is a real concern. In South Africa, we've seen this horrible situation. Hamans Kral spread across uh, the Gauteng the province now and into Pumalanga with uh, cholera. It's a very embarrassing country like South Africa with cholera. But that is a real concern is waterborne diseases if we can't get clean water in the citrus doll, yes? 100%. That's our major concern for the strain and the stress the community members are experiencing as well. And besides that, uh, Chris, you must remember there's many elderly people in the community. There's babies that have to eat, who eat special porridges. There's those elderly people who have to take their medication. There's people that have to cook personal hygiene. You have to, the toilet system, all of that has to be considered. And then, of course, we have those people that are on the chronic medication, those who have T TB and HIV. They just, they, a TB patient can take up to 20 tablets per day. He needs to have enough food and enough water to, to take those items. So that's the kind of situation we are facing with, and that's, the, that's what's happening currently on the ground. And we hope and pray that at least there can be other accessible modes I know the Western Cape disastrous management teams, the traffic officials, the engineers are trying to work out a route that they can a temporary access route to get in and out of the town. Well, let's hope that they can get something going there very quickly because this could, as as you seem to imply, can become a very serious 
humanitarian situation worse than it already is. Um, and I guess a lot of people really don't think about the impact of that. And of course, here's the whole other situation. I imagine of 7,000, there's probably someone who's close to giving birth that's living in that town that's going to need care uh, to go to a hospital or people who need regular visits to hospital. This is this is a very serious concern. Now, you mentioned that uh, Citrusol wasn't the only place that was cut off. Did you say Vupatal was also cut off for a bit? That's correct. Vupatal was cut off for the last eight to nine days. They were completely cut off. Mm. It was the only way to get into that town was really just by helicopter. And on Sunday morning, with the slightest sunshine coming out, those pilots took the chance, although 8, 9 o'clock, it was very misty, 11.30, they decided with the slightest clear visibility, they moved in, and we managed to do a few drops into Wuppertal, and there was enough time to do the farming community around Wuppertal as well. So that was a successful mission. We are trying to get now, as we're speaking to you, into Friedendal, uh, that's completely also un- inaccessible because of our high levels of water going over the road and over the river. So we are working on a route. Um, we are trying to work on airspace. The weather for the next two to three days is sunshine. So hopefully by tomorrow we can get an, um, more aircrafts just to take out over to that side. Well, mentioning Sitzestal, that's not exactly a place that's along the coast. It's inland and it's cut off by water. That's a massive amount of water that's dropped on the Western Cape region. Huge. And if you look at the area like Worcester as well, Worcester and Rosenville, also inland as well. And yesterday we managed to get into um, Rosenville, Chris. That area has been hard hit on Wednesday. On Thursday morning, we received a call from the municipality, from the disaster risk management teams, from the community, asking for our urgent intervention as 1,280 people had to be evacuated. There's over 300 families had to stay in a local church and community halls, we managed yesterday to get through uh, into uh, Rosenville. We had an escort from the traffic officials, the Yugono tunnel that leads Cape Town through the tunnel into Rosenville and Worcester. They, they opened it up for us, just for our trucks to move through to deliver this aid. And when we came there, we saw some of the people, so um, they, when we visited the area, they still had on the same clothes they escaped with. They had no personal hygiene items. They never had a proper meal. And yesterday we rolled it out in the thousands to these community members. And we will be there in the next week or two to see what other further assistance they require as their homes. It's not safe to go to still as well because their house was right next to the riverbank. The riverbank burst and their houses are still covered in water. So it's impossible for them to be to go back to their homes. Yeah, no, it's uh, hearts and, and prayers out for people sitting in the situation. We saw the horrible floods last year in KwaZulu-Natal. Of course, Gift of the Givers also responded to that, to helping people. That one was really exacerbated by some poor maintenance of storm drains and things like that. But the amount of water that was dropped on the KZN was just insane, like it has been. I think we had 100 millimeters in some locations and on just a single day in the Western Cape there. But let me shift back to the topic earlier. Now, as you alluded to, this is these are areas you don't normally expect to be going out to as gifted givers to do this sort of relief. We expect the low-lying areas in the Cape Flats, like Kailicha and Gugumele, as you mentioned. Those are places typically hit by this sort of thing. So I suppose, as you said, it was a bit of a surprise that the calls were coming in from West Coast and from uh, the Cape Winelands and from Parl and places like that. Did it, did it catch you off guard, and did you have to shift your resources it would seem to me, as a person not involved in the organization, that right now you're probably challenged because the need is everywhere. That's correct. But lucky we had enough supplies in our warehouse. We had enough hold up of um, mattresses and blankets and food items. Um, um, and we managed to access routes for our trucks from Gauteng and KZN to come through to bring uh, supplies. But the magnitude of the disaster Chris, every day the numbers are changing. When the first calls came through, we probably thought about three, 4,000. At the moment, there's over 10,000 people affected, and the numbers are rising on a daily basis. But as you correctly said, it was not only the informal settlements, it was areas outside of Cape Town that required more help than the informal settlements inside. Because these people, even the, the residents and the municipalities of that region, did not expect the rain to cause so much damage. So we are still reaching out to these affected communities. Uh, we have, there was a bit of a shortage, not in, uh, in terms of blankets from suppliers as well. We've managed to secure enough supplies now from other provinces, and our trucks are still carting them on a daily basis through to the Western Cape. 
and food items we are purchasing in the in the thousands to get to assist these communities because the last thing you want to do is for is, is for um to have any incidents where people where, uh, pe people get ill because of not, of not enough food well, Ali, you know, a lot of people are familiar with Gifted Givers, but I have an international audience and many of them never heard of Gifted Givers, even though you've taken your assistance and your humanitarian work abroad. Of course, famously in the earthquakes in Nepal, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Gifted Givers went there and has helped in other places. So very quickly, let me just give my understanding and you can correct me on anything I get wrong here. OK, how's that? Fair enough. So Gifted Givers is a private not-for-profit organization based in South Africa. It's not based around any particular faith. And it provides humanitarian assistance to all peoples, to all peoples, whether they're Christians, Jews, Muslims, colored, black, white, it doesn't matter. You're there responding. And I think the response this week is is is, is clear evidence that, that you respond to everyone's needs because you're hitting communities that are primarily colored, like Citrus Dahl, color communities that are primarily white in locations in West Coast and in the Cape Winelands, white and colored, black locations where black folks tend to congregate. It's not about where you come from or your origin or your faith. It's about Humanity is that is that a fair statement about gift to the givers? Under the same correct, Chris, we assist people. Doesn't matter which color, religion you come from. We are there as a humanitarian organization, and that was given an instruction given to our chairman and founder when he formed this organization from his spiritual teacher. We informed him on that day. You will form this organization and you will serve men of of all race, of all religion, of all color unconditionally. You would expect nothing in return, not even a, a thank you. In fact, if you get a kick up your backside, take it up, take it as a bonus. And that's <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the foundation starts off, and that's the foundation ethos. Our motto is best amongst people are those who benefit mankind. No, it's absolutely brilliant. Of course, your founder, Dr. Suleiman, um, wonderful person. I had the opportunity to interview him last year in Santon City. It was an excellent occasion. Unfortunately, um, a lot of fanboys hanging around. Everybody wanted to come over and shake his hand. In the middle of the interview, they kept interrupting as I was interviewing him. <laughs> like, excuse me, we're doing an interview here. But today, we don't have that distraction, a chance for you to share us what's going on. Well, how can people help? Is is there a way? I mean, obviously, I, I assume that uh, Gift of the Givers gets support from corporations. They probably donate resources and money. Can private citizens help out? And if so, how can they help out with relief? Yes, the need is huge. Imagine taking over 10,000 people and the numbers are still climbing. These are people that's going to require a basic food hamper, blankets, mattresses, new clothing. They are children who are busy with their June exams, their middle term exams all this stationery, the school uniform, and textbook got washed away. So, of course, we have to support them as well. Uh, lucky at school vacation now, but in three weeks' time, when they go back to school, they would have to need school uniform. So we do have to provide that. And then, of course, it will be your personal hygiene items, bottle water, new bedding, new beds. So it's a very expensive exercise. So we are appealing to people to support this initiative as there are tens of, there's tens, over 10,000 people affected and they need assistance, they in dire need of assistance, and we are still rolling out the, the floods course last week and Wednesday. Our teams are still on the ground as I'm speaking to you, delivering aid to the affected areas. Well, Ali, it's it's a real challenge, obviously, for what's going on here. Uh, bless you and, and, and all the folks at Gifted Givers uh, for the efforts you put out. I, I love the founder's approach. You know, don't expect a thank you or anything in return because it's not about being patted on the back. It's about making a difference for humanity, for other people. And that's no greater love can there be than to help out people in need. So thank you so much for that. Um, my my best uh, wishes on the challenge that lies ahead because it's just starting, as you indicated, kids going back to school. This need won't end. These people's lives, many of them are horribly damaged, if not, uh, not destroyed, but certainly greatly impacted by this. I mean, people... Well, they have jobs. Is there their means of employment still there? Lots of things on the horizon here. You mentioned the medical needs and things like that. But uh, before I go, um, uh, Ali, I'd like to give you a chance to give any last comments or thoughts about the situation or about Gift of the Givers, just to let people know about it as we wrap up this conversation. Just to give people the context of the emotional damage to people, uh, of the families that suffered during these storms. Went to one family who only survived on the social grounds which is just about 2,000 rand for, for the month. She went to this family and their budget and their food means everything to them. So imagine coming to your place and you see your last food in your cupboard flo floating away in front of you. You speak to a mother 
who explained to you, I thought I was going to die. I hang on to my four children around me and I was walking and I thought they were going to slip off because the water was coming towards my chest. That's the kind of trauma and situation these people went through. And these people who have lost everything, who was 50, 60 years old and telling you how I'm going to start my life again. Who's going to help me? What am I going to do? I just feel like I could have died in that flood. That's, that's the way, this is kind of the emotional trauma these people are going through. We thank everyone for their prayers. We thank everyone for their support. But this journey does not end here. Well, Ali Sable, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I know you're under the pump. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of work ahead. Very busy uh, in the Western Cape trying to help people uh, survive this mess. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a uh, conversation with Ali Sable from Gift of the Givers there in the Western Cape, responding to the recent floods in the Western Cape and the situation, a dire situation for many people. Uh, spread widely across the Western Cape and caught a lot of people by surprise. And keep in mind that bad weather is supposed to be coming back to the Western Cape here in the next few days. We'll see if that actually pans out or not. But once again, folks, if you want to help out, uh, go out and look up, go online, look up Gift of the Givers, see what you can do to help out if you have the means. If you don't have the means, then the thoughts and prayers and, and good wishes are probably enough. But for those who have the means and deeper pockets, uh, please help out where you can. Thank you so much. God bless and have a good day.